Hello, everybody. Welcome to Music 104 for Spring 2021, uh, Rock Music History and Appreciation. My name is Shane Cadman. I am your professor for this class, and uh, I am just totally cool with you calling me Shane. Let me just get that out right away. Um, that is fine. You could can call me Professor Cadman, that's fine too, but Shane is okay. As long as you don't call me things like dude and stuff like that, we're, we're fine. Uh, so I wanna welcome you to the class. Uh, this video is going out on Sunday. The class officially starts tomorrow, but I'm gonna publish things and at least get some of the introductory materials ready for you and the welcome materials so that if you wanna browse through it, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, you're gonna wanna hit this um, uh, probably Monday and uh, and get going in the class. So I've got a bunch of things to talk about the class so that we're set up and ready and hopefully I will remember them all. Um, there's gonna be a video every week. They will normally go out Monday mornings around eight o'clock and it sets the context for the week and lets you know a little bit about the chapters you're gonna be studying and the material that you're gonna be learning about and uh, any other important announcements that I may have out there for you. Uh, one thing right away, I mentioned this in the emails that I sent out already, but this class is very closely connected to the book, the textbook, uh, Rock Music Styles by Catherine Charlton, 8th edition. If you want to do well in this class, you will need that book. Uh, the, the quizzes, the tests, uh, all of that is very much connected to that. Um, there is a 7th edition. I've had students say, can I get away with using the 7th? Probably there are some, most of the changes are later. There are a few things that are taken out uh, in the book in the earlier sections, but the biggest concern is at the end. If you go earlier than that, I, I don't make any promises. Um, can you pass the class without the book? It will be tough. Uh, I did have some students in the past that uh, sort of, they chose to go the no book route and then would just look things up on Wikipedia or what other articles that they uh, could find. Uh, the challenge is that I, a lot of my assignments are specifically asking you to reference songs that are in the book, bands that are in the book. And so I had students that, that wrote well in terms of the assignments that they did, but they were totally wrong because it, it, it obviously it was all coming from a different source and it didn't make sense. So it's, it's really important that you have the book. Now, you can have an electronic copy of the book. I would suggest renting it for the semester. Uh, you can get it through our bookstore. You can get it through Amazon, probably other places as well. Um, but I would uh, suggest that you, you, you know, go the least expensive route that you can go, but have the book. If you're, you know, I've got a friend or a, a sibling or whomever in the class with you and you want to go together on the book, that's totally fine. The library has a copy of the book. Um, but, you know, in this whole COVID era, things uh, are, are just so strange. I don't even know. As of right now, I don't think we even have access to that. So uh, if you haven't gotten it already, get the book, rent it, rent an electronic copy, something that you can have through till the end of the class, which is on June 6th. Uh, so, you know, you just need to, to get it through June 7th and, and you'll be fine. So that's, that's a, a really important thing. Now, every week, you will have a, a, a video, like I mentioned, and these videos, I'm gonna actually ask you a question in the video that you're going to reply to, and it's part of your grade. So it's, it's, it's a, not a huge chunk of the grade, but it is part of your grade. So you get 10 points for replying to whatever my question is. So somewhere in the video, sometimes I put it in the middle, sometimes I put it at the end, sometimes uh, you know I'll, I'll, I'll say it up front, although that's rare. Um, I'll put the question out there and then you're gonna reply in the announcement. Now this video is gonna also appear in your welcome section, so I don't want you to reply there. I don't even think you'll be able to. I also don't want you replying to the video on YouTube, which is where I, I host these things from. Reply in Canvas, that's how I will find it. So there's gonna be uh, 16 of these videos and there's going to be uh, a 10 points uh, a reply. So that's one part of your assignment. You're going to have a quiz for every chapter that we study in the book, which is chapters uh, one through 19, plus there is an orientation this week. So we, we, I purposefully get us to a slow start in case there's any ads or anything like that. Um, so you're gonna basically have 20 quizzes you're going to have 16 reflections slash observations. I'm gonna give you a topic 
to write about, and you're gonna write at least 200 words on the topic. It's always connected to the material in the book. And then every week you're gonna have a discussion. And one thing that I haven't done in the past that I'm gonna try to do uh, once we get all situated here is I'm gonna break the, the whole class into uh, smaller groups, hoping that it's a little more interesting uh, one thing about these discussions is that when you go to them, I set it up so that you can't see other replies before before you post yours. I did this because I started to realize that some students were basically going to the discussion, reading what other people wrote instead of going to the materials, and then just riffing on what they were seeing there, which defeats the whole purpose. You know, I'll probably rant on this a couple times in this semester. It's not a bad rant, but a rant about, um, you know, you're here to learn. And the thing about college is that college, you know, some of you may be, you know, pretty fresh out of high school. Some of you may be, you know, seasoned college students. Some of you may be coming back and taking these classes after years off. But the point of this is learning. It's not about the piece of paper you get at the end. It, it honestly isn't. It's about all the things that you can learn so that you have a, a wider skill set and a broader world view and all of those things. And, and so much of what we learn in this class is still so relevant today and so important. Even things that we're going to learn about, you know, early on, we start talking about the role of race, because the, the whole history of, of uh, American popular music, if you will, is the roots that came out of the slaves. And uh, so, you know, you have to deal with that. You have to deal with the racial history of the country. And so uh, it's, it's really important that you, you learn that a lot of what we listen to, there's a long legacy going back 100, 150 years or more, uh, that gets us to where we are. The reason we don't go much beyond that is because it was, you know, before recorded and if music didn't get published and we'll talk about all those things down the line. So you're going to have your discussions, your reflection observations, your quizzes, your weekly video posts. Then you're going to have three tests. So you don't have like a midterm final like some classes do. You have three tests. I divide it into thirds and I do that really to help you out. So instead of saying, all right, you got to deal with the first half of, of the class and then the second half, we, we basically take about six modules uh, per test and it makes it a little easier to do. Plus a lot of the questions that you're going to be uh, dealing with on those tests come from the quizzes. So the idea is to help reinforce these things uh, so that you, you come out with knowledge. And it's not just you know, pointless abstract things like what was Chuck Berry wearing when he played at this concert or whatever. It's more important things, broader picture things that I think are important. I'm not a big dates guy uh, in terms of this class, so I won't necessarily ask you what year did this song come out. I will talk a lot about the years because it's very important. Um, but but you don't get tested a whole lot on it. Hopefully you'll get that as you go. Um, for those of you that are in this class and you're thinking, you know, I'm not a big history fan, um, you're in a history class and life happens in history, right? We are in the present. Think about the history of just the last year. Think about the election. Think about the pandemic. Think about, uh, you know, what was happening last summer, what was going on. Um, you know, with, with George Floyd, with all of those things that are going on, that's history. We're going to be talking about history. And then sometimes it's going to be frustrating when we see the civil rights movement in the mid sixties. And you're thinking, you know, are you kidding me that we're talking, you know, 50 years ago and, and we still haven't figured this out. Um, and there's lots of reasons why it's, it's, a, it's complicated. We as people are complicated and you're going to learn a lot about that as well, because we're going to learn about complicated figures, figures who were maybe great artists, but not great people. And, you know, we see that uh, today as well. And it's common for me in my assignments to, to actually have you tie in a current reference. So, uh, you know, it, it won't be uncommon to say, talk about the roots of, of rhythm and blues, but then to say, what artists are influenced by that style as well. So not is it only important that you have the textbook, it's important that you're listening to the music of the class. So every module starts off with a Spotify playlist. If you don't have a Spotify account, you can get one for free, get it. Um, 
I personally recommend that you pay for it only because it pays the artists a little bit better and I'm very sympathetic towards the artists. A lot of them I know and they're my friends. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, you can do that. You can get a family so that everybody in the family, I think it's up to six accounts, uh, very affordably, but there's free accounts. So make sure that you sign up to that. Also, when you take the quizzes or the tests or whenever there's listening on it, it's going to be connected to the, to Spotify, uh, not all the time, most of the time. Uh, and so you'll, you'll want to be in Spotify. I had a student who uh, was having a lot of trouble taking a, a, a part of a test, and it turned out that he didn't have Spotify and didn't have it, you know, he didn't even have an account to say nothing of having it loaded and running when it was time to do the things. Um, but every module will, uh, will start off with a, uh, a playlist of the songs in the book, plus other songs that are important that I want you to hear as well. So it's, it's really important that you listen to the music. Um, when you take this class, there is a, a rhythm to the class that I keep pretty consistent. So Monday mornings, your weekly materials open up. I do not open everything up wide, right? I don't just say, oh, here's the whole semester. It, that doesn't serve anybody, and especially if we're having discussions and I need to get you through the material and have it learned in a pertin, uh, particular way. Now, keep in mind, this is asynchronous. So that means we don't have a time that we meet, but, um, but we do have a, a structure for the class. Uh, I will say, so that I don't forget, uh, Monday night, the first night of class, I will uh, be live on Comfort Zoom, which there is a link to that on... Um, in, in Canvas. Uh, if anybody wants to pop in and say hi, ask any questions, uh, if there's anything you're unsure of or anything you need to know, I'll just be live from seven to eight so that you can uh, connect with me. It's not required. It's not graded. Again, this is a totally asynchronous class. So while you'll get to see me each week and we'll deal with the discussions, um, we don't have a meeting time. But there is a rhythm to the class. Mondays, the class of the modules for the week open. Now there is uh, a two to three modules per week. So there are chapter modules. So uh, this week you just have an orientation module and then you have an assignments module. Uh, some weeks, I think there's, there's maybe three of them or four of them where you're gonna have two chapter modules in a, in a week. And then always every week there is an assignments module. The materials open up on Mondays at 8 a.m. The assignment modules open up on Tuesdays at 8 a.m. And you have from Tuesday to Sunday to get that work done. The, all assignments for the week are due at 11.59 on Sunday night. Do not wait until the last minute. I have had students that at you know 11.50, you're trying to crank these things out and the time runs out. I don't accept late assignments. Um, un under very rare circumstances. I give you plenty of time to get everything done. The one thing to be mindful of with the discussions is that the discussion always has two parts. You're gonna have an initial post and then you're gonna reply to uh, at least two other students. That initial post of yours is due on Thursday of each week. And the reason for that is that then I want you to have time to go back see what everybody's, you know, posted and then, you know, reply and actually try hopefully to have as best as we can a, a discussion, you know, an online discussion. So I will usually send a reminder out on Thursday mornings. I will usually send a reminder out on Sunday morning saying, hey, it's Sunday. Don't forget your assignments that are due by the end of the day. So uh, I let you know what's going on all the time throughout the class. But you also have your syllabus. You have the, the Canvas syllabus. You have over on the right of your page in Canvas, it shows you the upcoming assignments. And then there's also the sort of traditional, uh, that doesn't really have due dates in it, but syllabus, you can find that as well. They're, they're gonna be in the welcome module. You're gonna find them, at, if you click on the syllabus link on the left, um, you'll find all that. Hopefully because it's spring semester, you've got some experience with this. If you have questions, reach out to me, email me. I will get back to you. I do my best to get back to you within 24 hours. Most of the time, I'm back to you much quicker than that. Occasionally, odd things come up, but that's the way that it goes. Um, but I do what I can. I, I want to be responsive. It's really important to me because I know that it's really important to you. So if you have questions, concerns, issues, please, please let me know. Um, so that's the rhythm of this class. Now, the one other assignment that you're going to have um, is you're going to have a concert report. 
uh, up until the pandemic hit, uh, those were either you would go to the Grammy Museum or to a live concert. Obviously, with the way things are in the world today, there are no live concerts really. Uh, all that shut down. So your report is on a video that you choose by a rock, country, pop, hip hop band. Um, I give you a list. You'll see it on Canvas. Uh, it's just a starting point of YouTube videos of concerts. But you can do other ones or if there's something on Vimeo or whatever. If you're unsure if it counts, please reach out to me. Uh, I don't want you doing a jazz concert. I don't want you doing a um, uh, like a classical concert or your cousin's recital. Uh, I also don't want like DJs and EDM and stuff like that. I want bands, live musicians, that kind of stuff going on. Uh, I know that that is starting to get a little more gray. I used to, in the old days, tell everybody, hey, you know, it needs to be a signed band on an established label and they need to have an established career. But that doesn't really happen. Uh, it's harder these days. And there's a lot of artists out there that are doing their own thing and, and doing quite well at it. So um, I think that's it. This coming week is orientation week. It's just to get us all on the same page uh, in terms of, uh, you know, taking an online class. I've actually been teaching online for a number of years now. I was doing it before COVID. So I was, when we had to make the switch, I was already rocking and rolling. I, it was not a big deal for me. I was, I was already up and running. Um, so you, you get the benefit of that. Hopefully you haven't had to deal with too many teachers either in high school or college that got thrown into the deep end with this and, and maybe you didn't get the experience that you were hoping you were going to get. But uh, I've been doing this for a while. So, so that's, that's a good thing uh, for you and for me. Um, so you're going to learn about orientation. You're going to learn about uh, how to take classes on, online. I sent you a link out to a video to watch. There's modules that I want you to watch. There's going to be a, a point in one of the assignments where I'm asking you, like, what did you learn from the modules about online learning? Um, last time I had students that just sort of gave their own personal thing. What I want to learn is what your, uh, what, what I want to see is what you've learned from those materials. There's a great video on how to prepare uh, for an online class and how to do well. I will tell you right now, the secret to this class and the secret to life, to successful life, is time management. It really is. If you know how to manage your time well, you're going to do well in life. You're going to be successful. Um, so my suggestion is you figure out the rhythm of this class that works for you. Are you a morning person? Are you a night person? Do you need to set reminders in your phone, on your computer, on your watch, whatever, whatever tools you need to help keep you on task, use them and set up a system that works for you. If you are a procrastinator, that is a bad system and it is time to change it. So people often go, yeah, I've always been a, you know, a bad student because I just wait till the last minute. Time to change, right? It's time to change to learn that time management because honestly out there in the, in the, in the you know, real world, whatever, um, you're going to need to manage time well. And so, um, you know, I know these are weird times. I know these are tough times. And if you're, you're struggling, please reach out to me. And I mean that not just if you're struggling in class, but if you're just struggling in life, if you feel like you're, you're hitting a wall or whatever, please reach out to me. I'm here for you. I get it. I understand. Uh, I, I am an adjunct professor, which means that I teach music part time. I've been teaching music at the college level for almost 30 years now. Uh, my my full time job, my day job uh, for the last 10 and a half years up until the pandemic, it was running a, a performing arts venue. I booked shows and and put on concerts and plays and and, and other types of events. And when the pandemic hit, I'm, I, I'm, I, I work at Whittier College, we got shut down and I got reassigned. And I will be totally honest that some days are easier than others. Um, I am very grateful that I'm still working. A lot of my, my friends who are artists, performers, uh, stagehands, uh, uh, colleagues <clears throat> are out of work. So it's tough, I get it, it is tough. I am hoping and praying that with this, uh, the vaccines rolling out, uh, with all the things that are coming on, that, that maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. But I know uh, that we did not think we would be dealing with it this long. I figured a couple months um, and here we are coming up on almost a year. Um, so please reach out to me if you're, if you're struggling and having difficulty. I know this has been a long video. This has been almost 20 minutes now and uh, they will not always be this long. I try to keep them under 10. Um, and I set up the context for each week. 
Um, but this one I had to, obviously it's the beginning of, of the class and it's important that you watch all of these uh, and, and that you get all of this so that I can set everything up. Another thing you're gonna learn about is neural nostalgia um, in this orientation section, which is um, about the way that nostalgia influences the music that we love. And so I want you to read it. You're gonna actually have to write about it a little bit, but I want you to think about this and be aware that the music that we get exposed to roughly from the ages of 12 to 18 or 20 will become our, our favorite music. And you're gonna learn about why that is. Um, and that also is gonna be why the favorite music of your parents is their favorite music and your grandparents. And it's gonna help you to understand uh, people a little more and why they like what they like and, and all of that kind of thing. So you're gonna get that. And that's an important thing to be mindful of throughout this whole class because um, we can't cover everything and we can't go into super great depth on, on a lot of things. Uh, the Beatles alone could be a whole semester. Bob Dylan alone could be a whole semester. We're really going for a, a bigger picture, broad brush strokes. Um, one thing to be mindful of, I get students to say, well, how come you didn't talk about this person? How come you didn't talk about that person? Or you didn't spend enough artist uh, time on this artist or this band? Um, it's because we didn't have the time. We, we, we only were limited in what we can get through. Um, the other thing is that there are artists out there that may be your favorites, but maybe they didn't change the game. This whole class is about really learning who changed the game in popular music. How did things shift? The big game changers like Elvis and, and Bob Dylan and Jimi Hendrix and the Beatles, of course. Um, and, but there's going to be maybe other bands that you really like, maybe more recent bands. We also don't get really recent. I really get around mid eighties, late eighties, uh, try to get to MTV and that's, that's the goal. Um, you know, it's not as important to me that we're, that we're hitting the more recent stuff because you already know about that. Um, a weird thing to think about though, is that when you're thinking about, uh, a band like Guns N' Roses, you're looking at a band that's been around for over 30 years. They are not a new band. When you're looking at Nirvana, you're looking at a band that's been around for 30 years, you know? Um, they've been around a long time. So, uh, uh, you know, be mindful. Also start to explore, you know, what's going on out there. Even if it's not what you're into, go to Spotify and just sort of look at some of the playlists, go to YouTube, see who comes up, start to expand your horizons. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I do these all in one take and I don't, I've done them enough that I don't really pre-plan. So if I end up like yawning or coughing or something like that, I'm not redoing it this far in. So, uh, you know, forgive me for that. Okay. I think that's it. That was a long welcome, but important welcome that sets up the whole class. Um, and normally you, my weekly videos aren't this long. Here's your question to reply to. What is your favorite coffee drink and where do you get it from? So you might like a Frappuccino from Starbucks. You might like a tea. If you don't drink coffee and you drink tea, you can answer that. Maybe you get it from Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. Maybe you get it from the place around the corner that nobody knows about that maybe you want them to know about. Um, there's a lot of great places out there. So 10 points, it's, it's an assignment. Uh, in the old days, it, this was extra credit. It's no extra credit anymore. It's important that you watch these things. Um, so favorite uh, drink, and where do you get it from? Welcome again. I'm super glad that you're here. I'm really looking forward to a great semester. And uh, again, I'll be uh, on Common for Zoom live from seven to eight tomorrow night or tonight, depending on when you see that. Or last night, if you don't watch this until Tuesday. Uh, so Monday night. All right, that's it. Take care. Uh, let's have a great one.